New players need to stop using this flag. If you're watching this video when Safer Seas is released, don't go into high seas with this on, unless you're looking for a fight. Do you remember yourself as a new player? Did you ever really care about the law then? Do you even care about the law now? Of course not. You're here to sink or be sunk. We could talk about the law in another video. And if you did one particular tall tale, it's to make yourself look cool and red or blue or gold, you sadistic bug. So whose bright idea was to make the coolest looking flag to new players have a side effect of making you a massive beacon? You've logged in for the first time. You see your brand new rent sloop in its virgin white sails. You're not entirely sure how to customize your ship yet, but as you explore every nook and cranny of your vessel, you find the ship flag box atop your crow's nest. You peruse the catalogue of ship flags, you cycle through the fun ones, and then you see the traditional Davy Jones. There it is! You're a pirate now! But what's this? You see another one with a skull on it. Red tube. And that's immediately cooler. And before long, you have some random guy ramming you, screaming down the megaphone, and shortly afterwards, your recently docked ship has joined the many wrecks on the bottom of the sea. Why? What happened there? What just caused this new player to experience pain and anguish just as soon as they're about to set off on their maiden voyage? Join me as we explore how new players' diaper sails turn brown until they finally they realize. Let's just get the nitty gritty out of the way. Yes, if these players, myself included, spent merely five seconds or more on that page, they would have read that this particular flag makes you visible for all to see on the map. You've thrown your lot in with the Reapers with none of the benefits. Not only that, this flag screams, Oi, blood, what you looking at? I'll spark you up, son. Plenty of the sailors out there see it as a beacon to be feared. Seek and destroy if it's in the near vicinity, or go oh, to the exact nice opposite shot. end of the map because these people are simply out for blood outside of hourglass. The Devil's Roar seems to be the safest play to go, which is ironic considering that area is hell-bent on destroying you as well. But the most likely candidate for these flags are new players, just because it looks cool and I'm often surprised by their sudden rise in attention. I myself know that if you see a reaper's flag up, I take them out without question. It's not something that's worth the risk despite their negotiations. You could be hours into your run and all of a sudden Mr. Big Red and Scary has appeared at a port that you're sailing to. You have to sink them for your own security. Ryan here, a fan of the channel, joined me on a quest to boost our merchant emissary value before the end of the month. After checking out a solo reaper, watching them sail away only to try and pounce on us later on, badly, it put our hairs on end. We were doing a voyage for a sunken ship after all, and that's worth a fair amount of value. It would be a shame to lose it all now. So near our last destination, it seemed like another sloop was near the port ahead of us, bearing the dreaded reaper's flag. No emissary though, so we do what we do best and ran them off the seas. As we smash into their posterior, within moments, they are hopelessly sunk. But it wasn't the last time we saw them, as we fished around the waters looking for the wreck only to find out that we were missing the key to the final segment, either that or as bugs, we noticed on the radar that the sloop was coming awfully close again. Disappointed that our voyage was basically for nothing, we decided to pay our sloop friend a visit. Ryan, the apprentice of ramming, was about to take a crash course and become the master. It's a bit weird seeing the please happen in Hourglass though. There are some players out there that merely activate the Hourglass to get a bit of bonus coin at the end when they decide to cash in. So imagine our surprise when we invade on an Hourglass session and these guys, anchored up on an island, Hourglass activated, reap the flag flying high, and they're trying to suggest to us that they're friendly. We come in peace. Did we come in peace? The problem here is that we have no choice but to sink him or be sunk, and considering our massive kill streak, <laughs> it would be a shame if we had to start over. He said, "Oh, far out." <laughs> Why is everyone so struggling on this game? What the fuck? Sometimes it's very apparent that the players that you're dealing with are very much looking for a brawl. Wait, there's a player ship here. Oh shit! Oh, no! <laughs> Whilst fighting a sloop after a fort of fortune was completed, this brig had turned up looking to sow a bit of chaos. We started steering away to the next event, and they gave chase. Although I don't think they were expecting me to board them. Ah! It seems to be a trend that when you see a reaper flag appear, no matter the emissary they're running, the brig players are more often the ones that are actually out to attack everyone. A silhouette in their spyglass, and they're off. 
being the ship that is consistently the fastest in most situations, it probably makes sense. As such were these dark adventurers. They were loaded a bear, wraith balls and all, but the waves just weren't on their side. For every knot they gained in speed, they struggled with repairs, but they seemed so hell-bent on spending every single wraith ball they had to destroy us to try and nab an easy win that they forgot to maintain themselves. It's time to go undercover. Let us don the Reaper flag and see what it brings. The first encounter was on an open crew. Itman's 28th doppelganger had joined my ship. At first all went well. We had survived the skelly ship battle and had no issues. And then we spotted our first target. Another sloop on the horizon fighting its own skelly sloop. We decided to lend our assistance, but due to the communication breakdown, Itman was scared of the ship taking any damage whatsoever, so we swapped roles. As the other sloop was sailing away, I decided to go for the board. Unfortunately, my team deathmatch skills were rather lackluster, and whilst I dropped the anchor, I didn't manage to prevent them from escaping. As we gave up the chase and decided to steal their loot instead, we move on to the next event. While scrambling away at the Ashen Lord, they turned around just in time to see the same sloop had decided to come back and set itself on fire. Blasting potential copyright music, they go for the full collision, board, and start wiping us off the deck. We fought them off and picked them off one by one as they sunk into the horizon. Thinking that it was all over, we went back to getting frisky with Mrs. Crispy, but the difficulty had suddenly spiked up and had stayed that way. Whilst I suspected that someone was still hanging around, I just assumed it was the residual side effects of two or more players joining the battle. I should have listened to my gut, because as soon as phase 3 began and the meteor started raining from the sky, I start hearing blunder bombs coming from the ship. The Reaper bait was a success. Oh, yeah, we recovered with minimal issues, as our boarders had decided to steer us away from the danger. A second encounter was a bit more startling as I was caught with my pants down. Having done a small order of Souls Voyage, I had arranged for a friend to join in and grab the emissary value I was about to cash in. Harpooned my loot, anchored my ship. That was the mistake. I patiently wait for my friend to join. I suddenly see a sloop creeping around the corner. Anticipating the worst, I watch nervously. Nobody wants hours to be wasted. What I didn't realise until it came into plain sight was that this sloop was actually being chased. Another sloop, donning a Reaper Emissary, was looking for a quick start. What better invitation was a diaper-sailed ship anchored at the Sovereigns. Immediately, they gave up their original chase and started firing. The timing couldn't be worse. However, Shadow's timing was immaculate. As the ship was being repeatedly smashed, Shadow still hadn't loaded in yet, until the very last item was about to be sold. He had saved the sloop from the brink, and it was time for us to return the favour. Zip back to the ship, raise the anchor, my main thought was to get us an angle. We'd have to absorb the rest. Shadow's bilging ability had saved us, but my sailing skills are lacking. We harpoon our way straight back into the pier and manage to wedge the nose of our ship in between the posts. In a last ditch effort, I go to board them to try and prevent the rain of fire, and it seems that Shadow also found some time to fire back. Catching them off guard, we turn them into red mist. Surprised at the amount of holes that they had, we managed to come out victorious. Yeah, man. That was an interesting time to join. The next encounter, me and Ruby were just checking out the items at the in-game shops, only to be blasted whilst browsing. They had kegged our ship too, but it was only a small keg, so the damage wasn't nearly as impressive as we had feared. We crashed their ship into the pier and returned fire, one balling them in the process and suppressing them with even more balls as Ruby danced around their ship effortlessly. We had distracted them long enough just to sink them. As you can see, a lot of these examples seem to happen at ports. Once you're not immune to people paying you a visit whilst you're trying to cash in or even logging in, it's much more likely for people to travel in your really? direction oh when they know where you are. Oh, yeah, and if you're sitting at a port, really it's just easy supplies for them too. So consider this before sailing out into the high seas so not to attract unwanted attention. Unless that's exactly what you want and then prepare to instill the fear into hearts of players around you as they see your laser-like focus beaming in their direction. What you gonna do when the grass reaver? 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 Sorry, I'm locked in, you know? Please hold back, guys. That was really quick. We gotta calm down. Motherfuckers took all our stuff. Just got that.